gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of G Freak Speaks, episode 16, where we got my boy Bluey Warzone. Is it just Bluey? Would you say just Bluey? I reckon just Bluey. We'll keep it. Yeah, we'll I keep think it just Bluey. bluey. It's, we'll keep it's it all bluey. good. Call me whatever. Call you whatever. But welcome, man. Appreciate you being on the show. Just wanted to let the sponsors know as well is that if you guys wanted to sponsor the podcast, this is exactly where the time segment would go for 30 seconds or however long you guys require. Um, but let's get right into the podcast. Bluey, how you doing, man? I'm good, thanks. How you going? Good, man. Good, good. So uh, I don't think we've ever had a chat like this. It's a little, a little bit intimate, man. No, I'm always, I'm always gaming with, uh, with you when you're in character. So yeah, nah, we're always cool. like yelling and carrying on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To the um, to the audio listeners right now, when I first tuned in uh, to have you on screen right now in this podcast, I was wondering what is in front of you. It, like, it looks like a keyboard. Uh, it's actually the top of your monitor with like the vents, yeah. the cooling vents. I'm like, yeah, dude, this is guy. The big um. A big Alienware monitor. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, is this guy like on full on taking the piss? Has a piano right in front of him? Like he's Billy Davis or something, man? Like what's going on here? Oh, no. <laughs> no. Um, but yeah. dude, what's been happening, man? What, what, what's been happening in the gaming realm for you, dude? Uh, not much. Um, I just got back from a little holiday um, from Perth, actually. I went and um, saw... Linked, well, I went and linked up with a lot of people I met through COD and yep. through gaming as well, which was interesting. Like it was the first time doing that, but it was actually awesome. Um, you've been playing games with like these randoms you met like me in Verdansk and now you're meeting up with them, you're hanging out with them. It was actually kind of a surreal feeling. So got back from a little holiday in Perth, meeting those guys. And um, yeah, now I'm just getting into it. Now I'm getting back into it. Um, videos coming up a lot of like cool exciting stuff coming up through order so yeah yep. that's about me at the moment no good on you man good on you and for people that are listening it's it's quite different when you catch up with people that you've met through gaming and, and you go see them for the first time because it's kind of like you just pick up from where you left off but you've never met them before yeah. like it's a different experience uh, yeah. man like explain yeah, it to it was... explain to me how that was man oh it was it was uh, it I can't explain the feeling, but it was like physically, you know, like you don't really have an idea of what they look like and stuff like that. You know their voice and stuff, but it's like you you speak to them and your first encounter with them, you like know them, you know them really well. So it's like it's a weird feeling because you know them so well, but you haven't like interacted with them in the flesh before, which I thought was, yeah, it was just a weird feeling, but it was like it was cool. Like everyone was nice, like, exactly how like I, they were the exact same as how i knew them yes yeah, so so, was that the um the ozt crew yeah so voxy justin galos a few other names but yeah it was it was funny got to meet stodgy as well and evo yes yeah, um, no nah, it was awesome yeah no awesome man that's that's sick as dude um and then there's the come down man when you get home you're like ah oh, man wish we all lived closer and stuff man but yeah anyway man I, that's that's life yeah, I th I think it's I'm very jealous of what they got going on over there. They're all like they live close and they all game. They all share like the same aspirations and like goals and stuff like that. And I think it's actually awesome to be surrounded uh, really closely to people who kind of have that same mindset and desire to kind of push like gaming and content creation and stuff like that. So yeah, like very jealous. I kind of want to move to Perth just to be around that kind of crew. But yeah. Yeah, no, nah, it's actually awesome. It's really cool. No, nah, good on you, man. Good on you. Hey, so I want to jump into what first got you into gaming? When were you first exposed to gaming? When you were younger, older? When was it, man? What was the first game? How, how did it happen? Uh, Dad, yeah. Mom, cousin, friend? Uh, so I reckon the first encounter I had with gaming like ever, I was five years old, 2005, Christmas. My parents bought me the first the original Nintendo DS. And I just played that all the time. Like just got like, you know, the little cartridges, like just putting them in, playing every game I could get my hands on. And I was just like that for years, like just playing on a DS, playing on a PSP, stuff like that. And then when it came to like console gaming, I remember it's actually a funny story. My dad, um, we never had a console before. My dad was doing a lot of business overseas. Uh, he went to Hong Kong. And he brought back this like Nintendo Wii 
and you know it's a Wii. It's not like you know controller. Yeah. You know Xbox, COD stuff like that. But it was a Wii, and it was like it was just like a whole new experience, like playing on a console. They had a controller from, like, though. Nintendo. Yeah, it had like one of those like nunchuck stuff, yeah. and you're just playing like <laughs> Wii Sports with the fam. But put the nah, safety was, strap it was on, man. Fun. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, never let, had that thing on. <laughs> uh, but no, like that was, yeah, like I just, my whole life, I've just been playing games, but I think it was, you know, I got my first taste of like Halo and first person shooters and stuff like that when I was in year six. And I just loved it. Got my, played Halo with all my friends, got them to come over, um, played a lot of FIFA, but then I think it was when I got my school laptop is when I started going into like PC gaming. Yeah. Um, you know, CSGO, uh, League of Legends, those kind of games. It was just like this crappy MacBook Air that my school gave me. And it was like, it couldn't run anything, but I was still playing CS on it, playing ranked. Like, you know, like I had, it was a laptop and I had to plug in my keyboard and then plug in my mouse as well. And I was using... Like a new, like it was just, oh, it was the most makeshift setup ever, but I loved it. Yeah. Um, and I was like to my parents, I really want a PC, really want a PC. And um, yeah, here we are now. That's awesome, man. And I think that it's, it's always cool and interesting to see everyone's origin story about how they first came across gaming. But back to the Halo, what do you think of the current day Halo Infinite, man? You liking it? I, I had a lot of fun when it first came out. It was very refreshing and yeah. nostalgic. I was playing. I was like, "Wow, this this bring back like brings back memories." Um, but no, nah, like my my heart just isn't with Halo anymore. It was fun, like a lot. It was good fun. But when I was playing it at the start, it was very buggy. There was a lot of issues with the game. But I hope I haven't played it recently. Hopefully, they fixed a lot of those things. I've been grinding recently. I've come across no real issues the only issue that i have here and there is just like the crashing but in there yeah, that was yeah that, was, yeah, that was my issue i was playing ranked with mates and i would crash a lot and because i was crashing i was getting uh suspensions and stuff so i'd get like 30 minutes to an hour bans and i was like i can't yeah you know just it's not my fault like i shouldn't have a ban yeah, yeah i can see that how was that was the main issue off. yeah yeah it's, it's disappointing when shit like that happens um especially in ranked because they do punish you for it which is great mm. um but at the same time, like, look, when those things are aside, you know, the non-crashes, I've been playing it all this week, grinding it out, loving it, man. It's so good. I mean, I've just been playing by myself too. Um, and especially yeah. after seeing the boys at Chiefs be on the, the 10 win streak and on the, on the flight to Kansas coming up next month. Uh, I'm like, dude, I'm going to jump back on this shit, man, especially for the Halo Land coming up in, um, in Melbourne uh, t- in, in the middle of the year or towards the end of the year. So I've got to be going there. Take out the FFA. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Take out the... Yeah. Imagine that, man. Taking out the FFA against pros. That'd be a pisser, man. <laughs> That'd be funny. The G-Freak with his mullet wiping the pros. Undisputed. Undisputed champion of Halo. Yeah. That's cool, though. Like, I never, I've never, i never been into lands. Like, I've never had that experience. I've never had the opportunity to go to one. But it's really cool seeing they're, like, coming back and stuff like that. Like, I think it's... That's, like, kind of where... A lot of that energy like those tournaments and stuff they're they're awesome so it's going to be cool to see those lands coming up again in all like all games have you ever been to like a pax or melbourne esports open and experienced those type of uh, lands or you've never uh, been to one period competed or, or watched never never like never been to one period i went to one i went to iem city which is the csgo tournament they hosted yeah. in sydney but that was the only time i've been to like a gaming event slash like you know content creation thing I, uh, it? it's it's weird to look back but i only started getting into content creation like uh, like a maybe a bit over a year ago i never yeah. really um i just played games i just consumed them that's all i did i didn't think like this would end up happening but yeah it's kind of crazy to look back but now that like i'm kind of in the space part of the community it's going to be cool to kind of like go to those events now and see what it's like Oh, for sure, man. And I can't put... So how was the IEM, IEM experience? That would have been oh, dope. It was, actually, it was actually unreal. Like, I think me... I had, like, me and my mates at the time, like, we were playing a lot of CS, like, competitively. Just, like, with the boys Friday night. Was that 2019 playing, or 18? Which one was that? Uh, you went to? 2018, 2017. I can't remember. Okay. I 
think it might have been the last one until they moved it somewhere else. But yeah, the the atmosphere was crazy. Like I remember seeing all these videos because usually the CSGO tournaments were hosted in Europe or like maybe America as well. But then I remember the off occasion they did one in Australia. I was watching all like the YouTube videos on it, like the funny moments. And it was just crazy. It's just the the Aussie culture, like the shoeys, just the stack of the pizza boxes in the crowd. Yeah. They get like 50 boxes tall and yep. then it would collapse and the, the chanting. Uh, I always wanted to go to one. So finally going to one and being a part of that crowd, it's actually, it was amazing. Like it was, it was so cool seeing like the people you watch play the game, you see them in person, but then you also get to be a part of the culture and like the energy. That was awesome. Like I was, I'm glad I went it's and I'm like, I really would love to. Yeah. It's, it's more CSGO, intimate. Like, yeah. Especially like competitive CSGO, like professional CSGO, the energy and like the crowds that you can get at those kind of like tournaments is unreal. Like I, it's like the chanting, the energy, the support, like, it's just wild. And because CSGO is such a global game, you get teams from everywhere. You get to meet and like see different cultures and like people from different countries and stuff come together to like support a team. It's yeah, it's crazy. Were you there for, was uh, I'm pretty sure the year that you went last, if it was the last one before it came to Melbourne and then COVID happened was 19, um, IEM 2019. And I'm pretty sure the misfits were there and they were doing some sort of chanting or something. And the security teams were after, you know who the misfits are, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they were doing some sort of chanting and, and people got banned or they got kicked out or something happened, man. It was it was pretty nuts. I remember hearing that story. Um, but I was pumped for when it would come here and merge with it, um, with MEO, which, which was nuts. But if you had any land that you could go to, which one would it be to, uh, which one would it be and why? Any land, oh. That's tough. I feel like, honestly, I would love to go to like a CDL land, like a, a major or something yeah. and kind of experience that. I've never, I've always just seen videos uh, like those CDL ones. So I'd love to go to a, like a CDL major yep. and I like get into the crowd, experience that. Cause like the CSGO, like the CSGO one was amazing. I had a, I had a blast, but I've never been to a COD one. So I think going to like a CDL would actually be awesome. I think I that's the one I would see. See, you obviously you're referring to the CDL, so you would have watched the one, the Optic Major in Texas, dude. Yeah. I would have. I, sh I wish I, I wish I went. Um, obviously I, I've just started a new job, so I kind of can't. But that atmosphere, yeah. especially with Optic, dude. I, I'm, I've been a fanboy yeah. since 2010, man. So like 12 years I've been with the yeah. Green Wall, and dude, to see the Green Wall get up at their own event, I was like mm -hmm. frothing at the mouth, man definitely firm yeah. pants. <laughs> nah, the optic the i think like the optic fans a second to none like they're crazy oh, it's they're, awesome it's though, feral, like, but i love it <laughs> yeah yeah no i i love that as well that would be like just such a powerful atmosphere you'd be in there and you'd be like wow this is crazy you'd honestly just go for like the fans and the chanting yeah you wouldn't even you wouldn't really go for yeah. like the players but then it's like optic as well and they're winning their own major which is awesome exactly and i love the atmosphere of the at, at optic man um the, it's just crazy everyone like bandwagons on the band at, on the green wall as well they're just like oh who do i go for oh i'll go for that team because they got the biggest crowd and imagine you'd shit yourself come jumping up on stage and coming against them and hearing that through your headset like your noise cancelling headset works but it's not that good to block out the green yeah wall. You know, you're just, not gonna you're not gonna block out that kind of sound no nah. yeah no, nah, and I, I really look forward to um, the process. I don't know if you watch that, um, but it's like the formula. And for people listening right now, um, it's like the Formula One Drive to Survive series, but for Optic, only Optic, um, and how they yeah. go after a loss, a win, training, day in the life, all that type of stuff. It's a super good documentary. Um, you should definitely go check it out at Optic Gaming on YouTube. Yeah. Um, it's sick. And, and you can see that more content teams are doing that um and whatnot but what what team do you go for in the cdl oh i um i don't really watch it that much but i was a big 100 thieves fan back when on black ops 4 yeah like octane kenny um enable priest like i remember watching those guys and they actually had their own documentary series i think it was like zero to 100 or something like that but that was like it was awesome to kind of see 
because they they were such a strong team and stuff like that but they just got really unlucky i remember yeah, they did i believe priester was just super unwell um in one of the one of the lands or something like that but i, I was watching that a lot i remember i was working in like the stock room of my old job and yeah. i had my i would hide my phone i was <laughs> watching their documentaries yeah this this was years ago but yeah like i i'm not too in touch with the cdl right now but i would say like 100 thieves just because like i love uh, i love their brand and their organization as well like the things they're doing and just a, a vast range of different games is crazy like valorant i remember they picked up the aussie team for csgo back in the day that was awesome as well it was just so cool to see them succeeding at so many games at once that that's like what made me a big fan of the, the team well, Hundred Thieves is like an optic baby, you know what I mean? Because of nature, yeah, of yeah. And stuff, yeah, which is yeah. pretty cool. It's like, well, the formula works, man. You know, with what he's got going and stuff. Um, but they, 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 they are definitely up there, if not the best, uh, when it comes to streetwear, esports merchandise. Oh yeah. Um, some of their drops are very questionable, like the jersey this year. Not a. Fa- Have you seen it? Yeah, it's like kind of like a retro. It's like a college. college college long sleeve shirt uh, yeah i got i actually ordered the original like the not the original one the original one looked like a prison uniform and had like the black and yeah white stripes like that, a referee that yeah like a prison yeah, yeah a referee exactly yeah. <laughs> but the one after that the one they wore in 24 uh on black ops 4 that was awesome i actually have two pairs of that jersey um i love that jersey but yeah the the one this season is a bit but how are we? Yeah. I'm the biggest fan. Well, I like that Topo camo. You know that the Topo camo from Call of Duty? It's like the, the lines everywhere and shit, like the red ones and the, the slightly faded red ones and every going everywhere. That yeah. that was a cool design. I think that's what you're talking about with BO4, but they had a good team there. But so did Optic, but they just kept choking, man. Like both of the teams. Yeah. I think E United won that year, didn't they? With Claystar, e Arsenis, Simp, Ars- BZ, Simp. and Pre- yeah. Pre- um, Pre- Preston. So they won that year, but then yeah, they won. Have they won three in a row? Uh, Phase? No, no, they won that year. And then they then Dallas Empire won, and then Phase won, and then Phase won again. Yeah. Uh, so Arsenis has got three so. rings. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm not too sure, not sure, but I know I remember Dallas winning because that put Claystar and Krim at um Karma's level. Yeah, Karma's Same level. Mano. Yeah. Yeah. That's nuts. Scump has uh, 30 wins, uh, 30 tournament wins across 10 different titles. You see that? Yeah, I did. That's it's crazy. Nuts, that it's, is... it's so, it's kind of like LeBron James. Like you see someone just, you know, just be such a force in so many titles and games and he doesn't look like he's slowing down. He just keeps, when you think he's slowing down, he just keeps coming and he's, yeah, he's crazy. It, it's, it's crazy. Just, it's wild to see like athletes, um, like LeBron and like Scump and those guys just be such like still so good after so long. It, it's just wild. Oh, for sure. And I, I can't, I can't believe it. And the cool part about it is that, you know, you always look back and you reflect and be like, damn, I really wish I watched Jordan play. I really wish I watched more Tiger Woods or Mike Tyson. Um, you really got to enjoy the moment whilst these legends are around, you know, in the gaming community, such as Scump, like Scump's a household name. Um, biggest, probably uh, the biggest pro in the whole of the world. Um, but it's, it's, it's unreal, but let's, let's get back into the, the things about you, man. Um, tell me about some of the, the things you get up to outside of gaming. So you're, you're a student as well, correct? What are you studying, man? Um, yeah, so I was, first off, I was studying, uh, media arts and I was going to major in animation, potentially coding. Um, but that for me, that was just a hobby, like. I've always been kind of artsy, just like drawing and stuff like that. So getting, I got the offer straight out of school to study that. So I did for two years, but then, yeah, like I, like I said, it's just a bit of a hobby. So I went straight into exercise physiology, um, something about helping others, um, like sits well with me. I really enjoy helping others and knowing that when I walk away from like a client or like a session with someone that I've like you know, improve their day just a little. That make that like, um, that's awesome. That's just an awesome feeling that you can't really buy. So I've been studying exercise physiology for about two years, uh, but recently I actually deferred it to kind of pursue content creation because it's going so well for me. Um, 
I was, it's actually, it's interesting because I was doing exercise physiology at the time when my TikTok started picking up numbers and I got to kind of like a crossroads where it's like, do I just keep going hard on TikTok because that's working so well? Then like, what about my studies? Like I couldn't really, I felt like if I did 50-50 and I just like half asked both, I would kind of lose, I would fail my classes, but then I would kind of lose that momentum. So I just stuck to TikTok, smashed it out. And it was, it. looking back, it was awesome that I did that, but I, I did fail classes, but kind of worth it in the long run, I reckon. Like, you know, um, but yeah, so at the moment I've just deferred um, and I'll probably resume my classes again soon. Maybe like go part-time, pick up a few classes, but I, I wanted to give this year a solid crack of content creation, just have the whole year free to kind of pursue this to see how far I could take it. Yeah, I think that it's it's quite the risk, and obviously for, from what you're saying, so is this your so you do work as well, or are you just doing TikTok full time? Are you making money from um, TikTok? How's that work? So there's no creator fund in Australia, so we um, don't actually make any money from TikTok itself. But um, through order, I'm able to have an income, which is awesome. So that's what's keeping me going at the moment. Yep. Um, I wouldn't have, I don't know. I would have had to pick up a job and defer if this was the case, but yeah, order has just been an amazing opportunity and an, like just awesome time. And I'm having a blast with the guys over there. No, great, man. And uh, tell me a bit about order for people that don't know um, what they're about. What do they do? What are they? Who are they? Uh, so order is a, it's a esports organization based in Melbourne, Australia. Um, for the longest time, they've been just a sole, like just purely competitive esports, like CSGO, Valorant, uh, you name it. And at the moment, like this year, when I joined, they wanted to, they picked Stodgy and I up and they wanted us to kind of like move away from that competitive side for their brand. They wanted us to make content, have a bit of fun with gaming. So at the moment, they're exploring that fun kind of like, um, creative side of gaming that no one really sees because order is just being competitive so they kind of want to move away from that that look where they're just all professional gaming and they want to just bring a bit like have a bit of fun with gaming so that's why they picked up stodgy and i and we're making some a lot of fun awesome content with them and yeah it's been an amazing opportunity yeah fantastic and and long term do you reckon do you see yourself as either a content creator or do you see yourself working in the the the, the physio um you know background with your own clinic and all that type of stuff and clients what do you where do you see yourself man oh like a, a year ago i would have definitely said like i would have been you know wanted to work in the clinic have my own clients and then on the side do this like gaming and stuff like that because it's crazy like editing videos is, and producing content was always a hobby like that that's why i didn't want to do a degree um, in animation and like filmmaking because I, it was just a hobby for me. So like when I was at uni, it just didn't feel right that I was producing content with like, uh, for, like, uh, like real life footage and those kind of things. I just wanted to make gaming like funny moments and videos around gaming. Um, so that's why I stopped that degree, but it started off as a hobby and now like one year later where i'm at now it's like wow that's crazy turning all this like kind of hobby something like something i did on the side into like potentially something bigger um yeah uh, like i have no idea what i want to do i like i definitely reckon i'm gonna go back finish my degree but you know things are working out right now and like it was my biggest regret was not focusing on one either uni or gaming i kind of like half ass both so now i'm just like you know committed to the one year just see how it goes and like from there just you know figure out what i want to do and what do your parents think about that man how did they receive that yeah well my parents are very traditional like yeah uh dad's a lawyer mum's an artist Oof. um okay yeah kind of like yin and yang you got the analytical kind of the the serious side of things with my dad and then my mom's like kind of creativity comes. I kind of 
um, that's a lot more familiar to me. I feel like I've got a lot more of my mom in me, just like, you know, being creative, expressing kind of your yourself through like videos, edits and stuff like that. Yeah. But they, they yeah, I don't blame them. I was a bit naughty when I was a kid. I was always <laughs> gaming on my school laptop, never doing work. It would always be like coming home from school and just playing CSGO ranked with my mates for hours. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you ask them, they would, they would say like, yeah, it was, it was terrible. That school laptop was probably the worst thing to happen to them. <laughs> Cause I was just, I was locking myself in my room, just gaming all the time. But yeah, I, they, they were, they wanted what's best for me. And they knew like, if I was just gaming and doing that kind of stuff, it'd kind of be a dead end. I think honestly, looking back when I was a bit younger gaming, kind of lost a lot of my my younger years because I was spending so much time gaming um it was it was tr- like rough trying to study and just like do school and stuff like that when I was just enjoying gaming so much it was addictive like I I loved playing with my mates it was just yeah it's just something you can't really describe I reckon if anyone watches this they'll know what it's like to play Friday nights with the boys you play like rank CSGO, you just like you five of your mates and you're just in Discord playing your favorite game. Like that was just always the blast. Yeah. But right now, I think when I started doing TikTok and getting the growth I was getting, I was showing my parents and my mom was like, wow, that's amazing. Like that's kind of unreal um, to see her son get these like numbers and build a following and stuff like that. And my dad was like, oh, yeah, but he's, he's a traditional guy. He's a lawyer. He has no idea what the game is all about and what he was looking at. Every time I would show him like a photo of my follower account or like something happened, he'd be like, okay, what am I looking at? And I'd yeah. be like, oh, like, you know, one of my videos did this well. Like I've got this many followers and stuff like that. But it was until I got my um, deal with order, that order approached me. They, um, we agreed and i ended up joining order that my dad kind of you know started to be like wow my son's actually making something of this like gaming yeah and that's when both my parents just went like super supportive which is awesome it was amazing to finally get that support from them um but yeah like it's yeah it's awesome they um saw the results when they actually I started showing them all the cool stuff that was happening with order. They were like, wow, this is amazing. Like, I think for them, it kind of like flipped a switch in their minds where they're like, Oh, okay. This gaming stuff isn't just like a waste of time. This is actually like something that has potential to go bigger. Yeah. So yeah. No, it's great. And, um, yeah. here's one, here's one. Uh, how much is order paying you, bro? I don't know. I don't know if I can disclose that. I think, I think it's confidential, but if I like it, <laughs> Yeah, I feel like it. I feel like it's confidential. Like I don't want to put the number out there, but it's it's like it's actually awesome because in my life since We're I've been studying full time, <laughs> yeah. orders paying me this much. Wow. Hey, we, do we nah. want to go? Do we want to fuck with people? Do we want to just do it again? You make something <laughs> up. Well, orders paying me, and then you just stop, and then I'll just clip it. Yeah. Down. Oh yes. Yeah, so okay. 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 We'll, we'll go. We'll go for it there. People listen to the full oh, length okay. of the podcast. They'll understand it. Okay. They'll have. A yeah. Laugh. Okay. 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 Just to get Let's people. Let's do it. Let's do it. People clicking in there. Okay. So um, Bluey, the vibes are good at order. It's great. You got a good CEO, good team around you. Uh, you know, what's the bag they're paying you, man? Yeah. So orders paying me about. Yeah, is that good? <laughs> that was good. That was good, man. Okay, that was good. Cool, I like cool, that. Cool. I like that. You're working with me, yeah. man. I like that. That there's that. Yeah. There's that push uh, it's a bit pull. of fun. You know, we need fun. this clickbait. Get that watch time up. But um, no, honestly, my whole life I've either been in school or studying full time, five days a week. Um, yep. exercise physiology for those people who don't know is actually a medical degree. Um, as like I'm working with clients, it's kind of like physio, but I'm working with clients who have uh chronic or long-term kind of issues we're talking like cerebral palsy arthritis um it's it's not about fixing like you know a torn ligament or rolled ankle we're talking like improving someone's quality of life through exercise and whether that's just allowing someone to walk a bit better just by doing like you know like a 
uh, like a set of exercises and stuff like that. We're kind of focusing on improving quality of life with clients. So it is a medical degree and I was studying that five days a week. Um, but with order, it's, a, it's amazing because I've never had that source of income, that consistent source of income. I've always just been casual, trying to work a bit on the side when I was studying full time. But now um, with order, having that income and just being able to kind of pursue a dream and just have this like financial stability in the back just to help me allow me to you know, upgrade my setup and just afford things without having to worry about getting a second job or, um, you know, doing any of that going, falling back into that, that old hole of trying to like pick up shifts and, you know, find work and, you know, do I have enough money? It's, it's awesome. So it's an amazing opportunity. No, it's great. And it's good to see that, you know, order yeah. chiefs, uh, I don't think many other teams have full-time people with them except for those two really, but it's great to see that we're slowly starting to get to that point. Um, and there's funding yeah. there, there's sponsorships, you know, ultimately like, yeah, we are rivals, but at the same time, overall in the grand scheme of things, um, everyone's working together. If you guys close a deal out with Puma, we close a deal out with Optus. That's two new people to the market, which, you know, are in the market, which is great. And then other brands see that they come in and then you go, you got Red Bull and then you guys have uh, menu log or Logitech and whatnot. You know, you've got all these brands just coming and piling and piling. And so one brand gets another brand and you just, you everyone's helping each other by landing all yeah. these deals, which is awesome to see. Man. Yeah. Especially. It's, it's when, one of those things where like, yes, sorry, go on. I was just saying, especially when you want to like help the, the content, uh, the, the, um, the continent Australia thrive uh, with esports, which we are about 10 years behind. But as you were saying, man. Yeah. Like it's, it's one of those things where it's like, if you're going to look at like those people in other orgs as competitors, you're not doing it right. Like I remember um, I was like, I was pretty close with Anton, like Alpha Anton. Uh, we were talking about TikTok and YouTube and, you know, it was awesome because we kind of were growing together. Like, you know, I saw the Warzone hot mic videos he was doing and he was seeing that we were just like bouncing off each other. Yeah. And to see him move from a totally different game that was Warzone and find success in apex was awesome and now that he's picked up by chiefs like that's just amazing to me like you got to be the like if you want to do things right you gotta you can't be jealous of how other people are going like yeah you know, if someone's joining an org or someone's got an amazing opportunity you got to appreciate it because you find that with content creation if you want to have success the best thing you can do is surround yourself with people who share the same mindset the same aspirations, the desire to go like bigger and beyond gaming. Like we all want to, like everyone has that kind of fantasy that they want to make it. They, they want to play games for the rest of their lives, but it's, it's about like surrounding yourself with that people who actually do that stuff, who actually have that drive to create. That's awesome. So like, yeah, you're, you're on chiefs, Anton's on chiefs, you know, we're with order, but it's like, I look at you and I'm like, yeah, this is someone who like has that same mindset, who, you know, like who's already a part of an organization. I can like, you know, hang with this guy, we can chat. And it's cool because I like, this is the first time we've chatted just the two of us. I'm always like playing with you when you're in yeah. character. Yeah. But um, no, nah, it's, it's, it's awesome. You know, yeah, Australia is like 10 years behind and stuff like that. And a lot of people like don't believe there's any sort of opportunity in Australia. They're all saying, you know, oh, I'm going to move to America. Yeah, like that. I see maybe, that, yeah, man. maybe I see that. Yeah, maybe like when it comes to like competitive gaming, um, especially in like battle royales, you know, the tournaments, all the money, that's all that's all overseas. So I don't blame them. I think it's like you know, good for them. Like I would love to see them pursue that kind of that dream to go and play in those tournaments because I reckon Australia's got a lot of like awesome talent. Like definitely could go neck and neck with some of the the best players in the world. Yeah. Just one of those things where like ping and distance and you know, that when you're playing online, that stuff really affects a competitive player. Oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. For sure, man. But yeah, there there is a lot of opportunities in Australia though, especially for content creation, like you and I. Um, Stodgy, Stodgy and I, like, we didn't believe it. We were just posting TikToks, having fun with it. And so I remember Stodgy had this drive to like, you know, grow, become bigger and bigger and bigger, and he's still got that same drive. And yeah looking at how far we've come and like what we're doing now, it's awesome. So yeah, for anyone listening, there's definitely opportunities out there to like 
make something of content creation, potentially gaming in Australia, there's plenty of opportunities. You're just going to be doing it right. Oh, yeah, man. Hey, dude, how did we first meet? I don't even know. I can't remember. We met. Excuse we me. We met. Guys. Nah, we <laughs> met in Trapville, actually. Oh, we met in Trappy. Trapville. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we met in Trapville. I remember it was the uh, the M16 meta in Verdansk. Yeah. I remember the first oh, so match Cold we War played. Then. Okay, Cold War. Yeah, Cold yeah. War. First match we ever played together. It was Burnt Match, you and I. And I remember you clutched like a 1v3 outside promenade you were prone behind a rock and you were just like snaking on this rock yeah and just yeah like yeah bursting this team and i remember like when you yeah we won the game your mic cut out because you scream you're like ah, and then it just cuts <laughs> out yeah uh, yeah but nah that was um yeah that was the first time we met actually okay there we go yeah how about that man that was a while ago man man Cold yeah War. that was ages ago now we're up to this hey dude we've got with call of duty now there's after this call of duty modern warfare 2 uh, the sequel, obviously. Um, there's going to be every second year. Every, I guess you would say, instead of Fortnite, it'd be Fort Year. Um, but oh, yeah. Fort Year. <laughs> that's it's on, that's honestly really that? good. Yeah, I'm I'm super keen for the, you know, the two year releases. I'm I'm not a big fan of annual releases. It just never, like I guess when we were younger, like we didn't mind it because it was just something new, you know, new yeah. cod and stuff like that. But since we're like making a living off it. We, write, we just want to play something that's polished. We just want to play something that's like, you know, it's fun, enjoyable to play. It doesn't feel rushed because a lot of the games they're pumping out at the moment are just super rushed. You know, you look at Battlefield 2042, like how that's performing. Um, you know, I, I've i been like watching a few content creators on that game and I just feel bad for them. Yeah. kind of It kind of feels the same. For, it was the same for me for a little bit with Warzone, like the cheater situation stuff like that you just want to you know people are like oh you're playing games like you know you're playing games you're living like chin up like you know so i'm gonna cry about it but it's like no we like you gotta have fun you gotta have fun doing this stuff or it's not it's not video games it's just like labor you know it's just a chore um but yeah i i'm super excited for the two-year releases i think that'd be awesome to have like a long enough time where they can polish games deliver something that's actually like clean good that'd be awesome i'm keen for it man like battlefield had yeah. years to actually develop that shit and it came out shit i'm so glad i didn't buy that and and look yeah. EA out there if you guys are listening um look i apologize you've got a fantastic game going with apex legends um but dude do, do, tell yeah. me about how that went like was that last night that you played on the apex last legends night, mobile? yeah um honestly like get the flip phone no, yeah no cap Apex Legends Mobile is probably the best mobile game I've ever played. Like, if you had a look at the stream, I was stretching it out. I was using an adapter so you can see my, like, phone screen. Yeah. But I was stretching it out to 1080p. Um, but in your hand, like, the game is just super crisp. Like, it's actually, like, they've done an amazing job of, like, kind of moving the graphics over, but also creating, like, an amazing hardware, everything's so easy to access. Like... It's it's got like a really good system and it's actually like it was really enjoyable to play. Like it was a bit of a struggle. I'm not a mobile gamer. Yeah. And I know people have those like gizmos that is like yeah. figures <laughs> on the top. And I was trying to uh it was it was a bit hard without those kind of like little gadgets, but no, it was it was awesome. It's actually such a cool game and it's like, you know, I'm not gonna be playing mobile games anytime soon. Yeah. But people people out there who like, you know come into my stream they're like oh do you play cod mobile or like you know they don't have that access to computers like thousands of dollars to spend on a pc for gaming so the fact that there's a game out there that's you know going to be available worldwide um like apex mobile that's crisp got amazing graphics it kind of plays the exact same as apex as well that's awesome people are gonna have a blast on that oh yeah man and do, can you imagine throwing a like a a pathfinder grapple in there and trying to give like the move it like your finger would be like what the fuck what's going I was on doing bro? It last you know, night i was trying i was trying to figure out how like yeah. what i was doing how like, the fuck do you do that so i was like i was you got to click the grapple button and then you got to use your move stick to like kind of like you know shift your body so you get that pull that momentum with pathfinder oh, man. and i was doing that and i was just <laughs> running out of like room to pull so i was just yeah. doing the 
I was just like grappling to into walls and stuff like that uh, all of last night. But I could already see there was some like there was a it was fun. Like I was just like having a blast. It wasn't any good. And then one of the games, I ran to like a three stack of just sweats, like three mobile, stack sweat. mobile sweats. Oh my god. I remember god. I remember I just got sniped and I was like, oh what the hell? And then I just got beamed and I was like, dude, what? And then I remember seeing like the octane, like just like um wiggling and stuff like i was like dude these guys are sweats yeah it, it was funny it Can was imagine it was like funny. you probably got rolled by like a bunch of like nine-year-olds they're like le- like in those weird positions on couches leaning across shit with no, burritos and no. shit on their hands and they got yogurt and custard on their faces bro yeah. you know what i mean like we were looking up on the ipad I looked up on, <laughs> yeah i looked up on stream like professional mobile setups yeah like what people run with their mobile gaming and it was like these big ass keyboards, these huge 60 centimeter by 60 centimeter like mouse pads. Yeah. And then it would have this tiny little phone screen and it was all connected up. Uh, I was like, dude, there's no way people play on that. Probably got done by someone like that. Like just like had the whole setup and then the little phone just in front of them. You got Rick rolled by a little finger fingered nine year old, yeah. bro. You know, little I gotta de- I gotta delete that screen. One. I don't want them to <laughs> I don't want them to see it. Yeah. Uh, but I dude, want to see it. we're just about to wrap it up, man. Um, where can everyone find you? Uh, just at Bluey uh, WZ on all socials. You know? um, that's where you can find me. Fantastic, yeah. man. And um, I just want to ask you one last question before we head off. Where do you keep your, your butter? In the fridge or the pantry? Your butter? Yeah, butter. In the fridge? Here we go. One Always. Where, why there. would you keep it in the pantry it's just gonna melt it doesn't melt not in melbourne <laughs> not in melbourne oh, no, I'm not telling you. Sydney, hey, sydney, sydney tropical shit going on fair enough that's fair enough what it does it get like a little soft in the pantry in melbourne well, in the fridge it gets a little too hot man so, and people people are telling yeah. me these strategies like there's one person that came on and they were saying yeah I, I like to get it out like the night before or someone says that yeah, his, their mum gets it out an hour before because she wakes up earlier and leaves it out for her son. And I'm like, oh my God, you toss up. What? <laughs> because otherwise hey, it's too some, hard. The soft the soft. I spread. mean, if you're putting, it, you're putting it on toast, like the toast is going to be warm. It's just going to melt right on the toast. You know, you can even do like a couple of tricks, run the knife under hot water, hot water. Yeah. soften it up. Like, But the pantry, I don't know. I wish I knew that at the start. Maybe I didn't do this podcast with you if I knew that. Hey, maybe, maybe you put the uh, the knife in the toaster and just put it on and just let it. What about what about tomato bit. sauce? What about tomato sauce? Where do you put that? This, this is gonna throw you off. I keep that in the fridge, man. Not gonna lie, I think I do the same. Yeah, I, ha- I've, I um, at home we have it in the pantry, but here I think I have it in the fridge. Okay, where yeah. I'm at. Yeah, that's right. You stream from an office, don't you? Yeah, I'm in an office. That's nuts, bro. That is nuts. Um, yeah. yeah. Got it decorated though, but yeah. That's right, man. You got Buller in the background. You got your PC. That's all you need, bro. Don't worry. You've got your keyboard in <laughs> front of you. That. Your Billy Davis keyboard. Is it signed? Uh, I got to get his I got to get his signature. <laughs> Just a scribble. Nah. Uh, it's funny, man. He's a funny man. I'll have to get him on the podcast, man. Um, but dude, yeah. that's it for me. I just want to let everyone, go, everyone know that this is also available on YouTube at Jacko G Freak. For the visuals as well as audio boom um that's my upload platform so you guys can see we're available but also available on spotify itunes and your best podcast service until then chat but be safe stay small and boom baby thanks for coming on bluey peace Thank you, man.